How's everybody doing? Welcome back to City Skylines East Yorkshire. I'm I Think You Know, and today we are working on the marina. Uh, I know we spoke about last episode that I think this would be the best place to continue working. And yeah, it's what I, I dove into and it came together really quickly and really nicely. And I wanted to get this episode out quickly to you. So that's why uh, hopefully uh, I'm recording this early and hopefully I'll be able to get the rest of the episode finished. Uh, quickly ahead of my normal two-week schedule. But in last week's episode, we mentioned about how I was very unhappy with how the marina area had looked previously and that I had seen a new technique being used. And I put it into implementation here. So you see me lay down some of those initial retaining walls. Those are not actually keys. Those are retaining walls. Uh, but if you place them down just right and link them together, they work beautifully as keys. The only struggle there is that the actual terraforming and land underneath them doesn't react quite the same as when you use the actual keys that are in the game. Uh, so that made this a little bit more of a struggle. I had to do a lot of terraforming, which most of that I've, I've cut out of the video. Uh, you don't need to see me working on terraforming for 15 minutes. Uh, plus, I wanted to keep this episode at a reasonable length. Uh, I think the time lapse here is about 15 minutes long or so, and then we'll dive into a live play, which uh, I'll do a little bit longer than I usually do. Uh, I think it's really important this time because with the marina finished and the entire marina area will get filled in during this episode, uh, it really makes the city look so much more complete. And not only am I really happy with the way that it came out, but it just makes the city look so cohesive and really is going to be an impetus for me to start building elsewhere. And I think for the first time in a while, I'm not actually sure what I want to build next, but at least it opens that uh, opportunity up for me so I could start working on things that are critical to the way the city functions uh, as opposed to just building out areas because... I want it to visually look nice and I want to fill in visually that part of the city. Uh, so maybe next time we'll work on the university. It's one of the few needs of the citizens that has not been achieved yet is uh, a place for them to go to college. So maybe we'll take a look at that next, but enough about that. We have to look and continue to see what's going on here. So I wanted this kind of square actual marina area to house uh, a lot of, of boats and water, and it took me a little while playing around with that, but I think I got it just right. Uh, for the rest of the marina, though, I built this little kind of jutted out area. And in general, what I'm really looking for here is a tale of many time periods in the marina. So I want newer housing to be built alongside the older housing. And for me, that, that comes with a lot of reasons. You would assume that in the early days of this marina existing, you would have functional docks, cargo areas, and the housing for people to live who work in those areas. But as the decades went on and that kind of coastal business would move towards more dedicated, larger areas for containerized shipping, areas like this would end up a little bit more run down. So I really wanted the juxtaposition of some bars and older housing next to new construction and new apartment buildings. Uh, I'm kind of modeling that off of uh, how it actually exists in real life in the city of Hull. Uh, you do have a lot of these older areas that are <clears throat> still beautiful and really great for exploring, but directly next to that in that marina area in, <clears throat> in Hull, it's called the fruit market. And the fruit market area has become a kind of uh, hipsterville in Hull, uh, supposedly. I, I, you know, I haven't really been able to get back there, especially with COVID, uh, in a few years. But uh, you know, what, what I've heard from my friends that are still there is that it's, uh, it's becoming quite bougie down there, uh, which is definitely not the way that it was uh, at the time that I lived there. But you're seeing this big transformation from this older, formerly industrial kind of decrepit housing and to see some of those areas being torn down and built into new housing for new people to live in. And, you know, that's always a kind of, a, I think, a struggle in any city to kind of balance the needs of housing and population against your history and against the kind of classical buildings that exist there. And 
Uh, in real life, I'm really glad that Hull found the balance to kind of do a little bit of both to maintain some of that history while also, you know, revitalizing and making space for newness. And I'm kind of following those methods here in, in this part of my city as well. So one of the areas that, one of the concepts really that I've really wanted to implement is what you're seeing on the screen right now, which is a kind of a construction area. And I found these uh, post no bills kind of green wall assets. Uh, I don't exactly remember where I got those from. They've probably been in my asset collection for forever, uh, but kind of looping them around this square here. And then I had a UK asset of under construction UK homes. And I kind of dump a few of those in there with some, you know, kind of kind of construction props as well. And I love the way that it looks. It's something that I've kind of wanted to do in other parts of the city prior to this, but never really found the right spot to make it work. And this is just the perfect spot to make it happen and kind of provides that balance of, hey, newer housing is going here, but it hasn't quite been built yet because maybe I don't even have the assets that would fit perfectly in this square. Uh, but you'll see as we continue to build here that I, I work with on a lot of different concepts here because uh, I recorded about two and a half hours of footage in total for this build, and that ended up into 15 minutes of time lapse, but uh, I was really focusing here on working quickly. I wanted to not be thinking too much about trying to make it look like real life or trying to make it look perfect, but just try to put a blend of buildings in here and make this entire area come alive. And, and for the most part, I really think that I've achieved that. Uh, you'll see at the end of the, of the time lapse and certainly in the live play just how much nicer this area is compared to it being barren and having those really ugly keys uh, exist in it beforehand. Uh, while we're kind of watching some additional footage here, I want to just uh, say thank you to everyone for the support for last week's video. And if you haven't seen that, uh, please go check it out. We built the bridge and we built uh, the first city, uh, our first kind of area outside of the city of Kingston to the western part of the city. And I definitely would like to expand on that in the future. But uh, as I keep mentioning in a lot of these videos, I am still working on additional ideas for a new series and uh, different from Kingston, different from uh, East Yorkshire. And uh, I'm almost there. I, I like, I'm just kind of waiting. I know one of these nights I'm gonna sit down and just say, screw it and start recording footage for that. But, uh, you know, I gotta make sure I do it right. I'm really using everything that I've learned about doing City Skyline series and editing video in this series and I'm wanting to apply it to what's next to do something even bigger, even more grand uh, and more technically challenging for me and hopefully uh, more exciting for you and, you know, a, a kind of city that I, I really expect to help bring in more viewership and help to grow the channel. Uh, so what you're seeing now, this is kind of a unique area and kind of fudging in some assets, something that I really don't do a lot. But uh, in the city of Hull in real life, this, the east side and the west side of the marina are, are only connected by this pedestrian traffic. And these are, in, in real life, these are kind of footpaths that are, are mechanized and, and they, they split open to let boats in and out of the marina. And that's not something that you can really do in uh, city skylines, but kind of using these fences and using these pillars, I kind of think it looks uh, it looks visually okay. I think you can see where those fences would swing out and let boats in. And after I edited all this video, I thought actually, mm, maybe the footpath isn't high enough and the sailboat props that I'm gonna put in there wouldn't be able to actually come out. But I mean, really, this is all visual, it's all props, none of this is functional. Uh, there was a mod recently released uh, onto the workshop that allows you to do movable bridges, which uh, I'm not going to start playing around with something like that yet. Uh, I, I don't really do that kind of functionality in my cities, but uh, really a technically amazing feat that somebody was able to put together a mod like that, and I'm really expecting uh, other modders and other content creators to continue to expand on that and create more options and uh, I think it's something that's going to be massively crucial and critical to maybe not myself but a lot of other people in the city skylines community to just build some more unique and interesting builds and uh, you know anything that makes the game more more realistic and more lifelike is is always a good thing 
Uh, so you can see I did kind of finish off that marina area just very simply, just throwing some boats in there. Uh, I will end up putting some more props and trees and bushes around it later, uh, as I will for a lot of the marina area, but not all of that's going to get captured on video. That's really just uh, to add a little ambiance and to cover up some of the imperfections uh, in those retaining walls that I built. I also used a lot of trees and planters in this episode because not only do, does it make sense to have trees and planters, especially on a coastline where you're not really gonna have a tree take root in such sandy, wet soil. You need that planter to support that tree life. Uh, but also because uh, those planters are really good for filling in areas where my ret retaining walls and the surface networks don't quite jive correctly. All right then, in this side of the city, I'm now in the western part of the marina. And this is where I needed to make a transition because you have to expect that the couple of blocks directly next to the, the boat part of the marina would be functional, would have warehouses and industrial areas that would serve the boats because boats need a lot of maintenance. They need a lot of work on them. Uh, I've never owned a boat, not really a boat kind of guy, but uh, anyone who I know who has or is into that, it's super expensive to be into that kind of hobby uh, and it needs the maintenance facilities around it so i found a few assets that i have which are non-pollution creating which is important considering that i'm putting housing uh, directly next to and around all the boat infrastructure but uh, then i kind of went a little off script i, I found these kind of high rises which they're just tall enough i didn't want anything massively tall i still want kind of the tower blocks that we built 10 episodes ago, maybe, uh, to be the tallest buildings in the city. But uh, I think these work really nicely. And then just throwing in some additional housing and foliage around them. Uh, it's just a really good way to balance the needs of this Western Marina area without intruding on the highway, because I don't want to have any additional highway connections here. And I don't want the noise of the highway to kind of be interfering with uh, the residential areas that I have built here. So this really works out nice. I love the condos in that plot next to the park. Uh, again, just drives the point home that that probably was something else. That was probably more warehouses and more industrial and it got cleaned up and they built some fancy condos on it. And once I built that little area, there's a small plot of land at the edge of the condos and I went, that has to be a bus stop. Uh, the traffic right now in this city, I'm generally between 70 and 85 percent, depending on the day, uh, depending on, you know, what's going on with the traffic in the city. But uh, I'm really happy with the way that works. But and the only way to keep that level down is to continue to add in mass transit kind of piecemeal and just a quick bus route. That bus route went from being not existing to being like the second or third most used bus route and I, I have four bus routes in total now and I think probably in a few episodes I'll do an entire uh, mass transit episode where we'll, we'll reconfigure the bus lines we'll redo the colors it's really hard to put bus lines in when you're still working on the city itself because you're never quite sure are you going to change a road are you going to change uh, with uh, traffic manager exactly how a road works and break your transit lines. So I always find it easier to put those transit lines in later, uh, but putting them a little bit of them in now just helps with the traffic and helps to ensure that uh, we just don't get a giant backlog and, and, and kill our city a little too early. And then for the rest of the video here, you're mostly going to be seeing uh, the detailing out of the marina area. So. A little bit of parking, a little bit of seating. Uh, you can see I did put a pier in off camera and then I actually, you'll see in the live play completely off camera that I put in one of the parks piers uh, because I wanted, I think I put in uh, the, not the restaurant pier, but the pier that has kind of a gazebo on it because I really wanted uh, people to use that part of the marina. And then for this empty space here, I really couldn't put any housing in because putting housing in that close to the retaining walls makes the land jut out from under them and not really any way i can solve that easily in city skylines so i kind of had an idea of put in a restroom put in some food trucks and some seating and make it an area where people are going to hang out you know eat some classically amazing british food 
and crack open a few beers. And then finally, the last bit we'll see here before the live play is uh, filling in this narrow strip between the highway and the, and the kind of the bulk of the marina area. And I kind of like putting in this older uh, Victorian housing here. I know your first thought might be that it's too close to the road, but you have to think that at some point this road wasn't a highway cutting through the city. It was probably a much smaller, less traveled road, and it would make sense for this older housing to be there. And nowadays, I can't expect this to be the nicest place to live. It's probably super noisy, but hey, people got to live somewhere. So I set it back uh, from the road as best as I could. But in the end, uh, I'm really happy with how this came out. It's a good way to fill in a block that otherwise is quite small, and it really helps separate the traffic out. Uh, and overall, the traffic in this area is not bad. The main interchange of the city is getting a little rough, but that was always going to be rough. Uh, but I'll show you a bit more of that in the live play, which is coming up in just a little bit here. So hang on, stick around. Uh, I'm glad you've made it this far. And let's go take a look into the live play. All right, and here we are back in the live play. I wanted to start off this section of the video with this particular view, because uh, if you can tell, it's a little bit different from what I was building, uh, both in the time lapse and what you might have seen in the cinematics as well. Uh, after I recorded the cinematics, I went back to this and decided that this there was like a smaller white building uh, in the corner here. And I, I really just didn't like the way it was looking that building that that white color is a little bit off, especially for this area. And uh, I've had this asset for a while. I've actually used it in my New York builds before. Uh, and I've always wanted to give it a shot uh, somewhere here in Kingston. And I think it works perfectly there. And I threw a couple other smaller buildings across from it. But in general, just getting this area done and, you know, somewhat detailed, uh, really makes a big difference and let me finish up the coastline here so i wanted the the bridge over here this was a more vanilla asset before that i needed to replace but to use these same style pads that i've been using i wanted to also connect it down into the marina area and what i forgot is that these keys which i originally had the road the pathway here on the key and the problem with that is the key itself uh, has people walking on it. So I kind of played around with the angles um, and, and all the road connections. And now people are walking both on the key to get along the key and up into the city center. You can see them walking all along this route here. Uh, but otherwise, they walk up the path and over the bridge uh, into the eastern side of the city. Uh, and there's a few other hidden connections under here. There are a few invisible pathways uh, around here, which is allowing people to walk through the marina area. And unfortunately, some of them are kind of uh, ducking and diving underneath because of the terrain heights. But uh, overall, the city has become remarkably walkable with these changes. And that's the kind of city I like to build. Uh, it's the kind of city that I think uh, a whole is in real life uh, to a good extent, uh, both a, a big uh, walking and biking city. And uh, I think it looks really cool. Uh, it makes a lot of use of the space over here and you know just the minimal not minimal but you know somewhat reasonable amount of detailing uh, has definitely helped to kind of flush out this area i even went so far as to build some fencing and bollards around the other side of the road because i really do want to get over to this uh convention center concert hall whatever it might be uh, at some point in a future build uh, but to show you quickly the rest of the marina really enjoying the way the kind of little harbor here sits where the boats are i don't know if these are vanilla assets or assets that i had in my uh in my workshop but you know they work they're not amazing this could be better but you know we're not we're not trying to go too crazy here uh speaking of the workshop one thing i wanted to call out and i will put this in the description and i'll probably call it out in the next video since i'm tucking it away into the end here but uh, I actually did put together a workshop that has all of my mods and I will be uh, releasing that to the public. Uh, so if you want to see what kind of mods I'm using, you can uh, because I'm working up to releasing the series uh, as a saved game. I haven't decided at which episode I'll do that yet. It might be 15, which is I think is the next episode. Uh, but 
it's time. It's time for me to do that as we get, you know, past the midway point and to a point where I am, you know, thinking about wrapping up the series at some point in the next few months. Uh, and then just the rest of this marina area, I really like, I, I did like that I went with some roads of parking over here. I feel like this area is really missing outside of the parking lot. It's missing some on street parking, which probably a little too late and too annoying to remedy now. But, you know, I like the transition between this uh this residential area and all the traffic coming out of the city center with a little bit of industrial and boat and uh, you know boat infrastructure over there and overall i'm just i'm really pumped about uh this episode uh, this is you know, the last couple have felt great too but this one has been you know a nice journey i've not been someone who does a lot of coastlines in the past and uh, this is a nice challenge for me uh, here's a, a pier that got built uh, off screen as well and before we uh, finish this up, I do want to show you, I'm going to pop out of uh, the camera view here and just show you how well some of these pedestrian roads are working. So crossing over the river, just tons and tons of people. And then you can see how the bridge is getting very heavily used, but the path underneath it is even more heavily used. So there's just people streaming all over the place. And look at this, there's like almost no car traffic. Those those purple uh, bars are all the private cars. Brown is the trucks. Uh, but you can see it's almost all pedestrians and that's going to make such a big difference uh, in this city. So you know, whenever you're building on your own, remember that it is really important to think about uh, not just mass transit infrastructure, which we touched a little bit in this video and we'll touch again more in the future, but also to think about the way people move about a city. Um, that goes for real life too. Uh, you know, city planners certainly need to do better work or cities need to allow the planners to do better work of getting our cities to be more walkable, more cyclable, uh, because it just makes the whole environment so much more friendly. And it leaves this beautiful area with bars and housing to hang out in free of trucks as much as possible. But with that, I think we're going to step away for today. Thank you for watching another episode of City Skylines East Yorkshire. Uh, we'll be back hopefully in a couple of weeks for the next one. And thank you for sticking around. Bye.